Hello, and welcome to the Screaming Closet, where Pencil is not mad, and we're back to a game that we haven't played in three months! Woo! We're playing Lucid 9. It's been such a long time, guys. I, I'm gonna say that I went and looked look back at all the other videos to remember where we're at. I, I really don't fully remember. Last thing I remember, we were on a mission from our awesome Sherlock Holmes lolly in the middle of the night, and we encountered a yeah. cute little girl. Yeah, uh, who was red-eyed and weird. Uh, but Shigure, who is our, like, Sherlock Holmes lolly, who's actually, like, older and who was once married or something, um, or her, her fiancé died, something like that. Mm-hmm. We're, we're going to be diving back into this. She's training us because something's been going on at our school. People have been vanishing. And one of the people who's vanished is a friend of ours. Mm -hmm. So, and we know, we happen to know from the very first scene of this game that something sinister is going on. Something horror related. So, we're going to be diving in and finding out what happened. Why it's happening. And if we can stop it. With the help of, like, Sherlock Lowley. There will be decisions in this game, they will matter, and you guys will get a say in them. So stick around, because we're doing this. Also, now it says Lucid 9 Priest. Good job. Yay! Once I'm under some light, I can breathe a little easier. I take a quick snapshot of the note and send it to Shigure without comment. She doesn't respond immediately, which probably means that she received it. With that, I stick to the shadows, and I return to my apartment. It's time to get some rest. The evening welcomes me with frosted arms as I stride into my beloved glade, my lovely burden slung over my shoulders. The sky is clear tonight, bitter, vacant, a spiraling abyss in a sea of strangled light. I take a moment to admire it as the familiar vegetation is crushed beneath my soles. Nothing constrains me, no incompetent bureaucracies, no iron gates, no suffocating schedules, not at this hour. Not at my hour. I dump my burden upon the ground, watching as she lolls away, still in the haze of beauty sleep. Innocent. Peaceful. Dreadful. I ready my knife, taking my earnest vigil at his side. When the princess awakens, her guardian will be eagerly waiting. Uh... Oh. Well, that was terribly quick. I stoop next to my burden as she jerks upright, eyes rolling in panic. Good morning, sweetie. What? Where am I? Her voice trails into indistinguishable croaks as her wide, pale eyes fix on me. I spare a chuckle. What? Expecting someone else? How, how did I get here? How else? I settle for a moment, allowing her to take in her surroundings. Allowing... Allowing me to hiccup. Allowing wow. her to... Allowing me to burp. Allowing her to see how dire her situation is. What fun is it without a tinge of panic? Please don't hurt me. Please. What makes you think I would hurt you? So, so y you'll let me leave? I casually lift my serrated weapon, allowing it to catch the moonlight at just the right angle. Now why would I do that? I advance towards her, slowly. She ekes away, pulling her weight by her hands. She is too tremulous to even attempt to run. You said the word right. Good job. Hmm. A little dull, but vermin are vermin. But please! I, I have a mom, a dad, a, a boyfriend. I want to study. I want to grow up. Usually it's cute when they beg, but this girl is bothering me. Well, I want to have a little carving practice. So what shall we do? Carving practice? Imbecile. My fingers twitch with impatience. Yes. Carving practice. 
and I'd best get started. I savor my moments with her, leisurely, meticulously. She tried to waste my time. I ought to return the favor. I finish all too quickly. The screams die in my ears as the fading echoes of stilted crimson plummet from the edge of my blade. The beautiful mess scattered across the ground is a sight for sore eyes. I take a moment to savor it. My canvas. My masterpiece. The heart of my soul and soul of my heart. If only it could have lasted a little while longer. Finished? A shadow slips from behind the trees, plodding unceremoniously on top of my finished work. Watch your steps. You're desecrating my Chez Do... Chez Auvergne? Auvergne. Pretty close. Good job. The figure only stands in silence, waiting for my reply. I attempt a different line of questioning. Where are the others? Elsewhere. So I gathered. Are they coming? No. So, who shall pick up my toys? I gesture to the artwork beneath the figure's feet. It doesn't budge. Me. You? Yes. By yourself? Yes. Call for the others. No. Why not? Leave if you are finished. It is certainly a one-sided balance of power. I can do nothing but acquiesce and click out of the window. I'm finished. I step away, but as the figure approaches my canvas, I swoop in, sliding my knife against its neck. Don't be so proud of yourself. The moment you are of no use to me, I shall have my way with you. It only stares unblinkingly at me, unfazed. Not finished? Equal parts disgusted and perturbed, I withdraw my weapon. I'm finished. Finished with you, too. I turn to the brighter horizon, striding away without a backward glance. When I arrive at school, still blurry-eyed from my nighttime excursions, I'm greeted with an unusual sight. A group of students, primarily female, are huddled around the post. As I edge closer, I manage to listen in. Your fault! She was wrong about you, and now she's gone! What did you do with her, you freak? Where is she? Tell me where she is! Please! Answer him! How could you do this to us? Suddenly, Rui blazes by me right into the center of the group, which bounces backward in shock. I'm barely able to catch a glimpse of her face through the mass of heads. What are you guys doing? Out of the way, Rui. This has nothing to do with you. No, I'm tired of this. You've been picking on her since school started, and don't you don't even have a good reason good reason? Talk to Shoji. He's our good reason. The group shuffles apart, granting me some space. I finally manage to see the cause of the problem. A slight figure, crouched against the gate with an empty look in. Wait, isn't this the same girl I met yesterday? Well, Shoji? I... I just... She's been missing for two days, and no one can find her. Didn't go home. Doesn't answer calls or texts. It's like she just disappeared. Disappeared. Just like the rumor said. You guys... Ah! Sorry. You guys do remember who started the rumors, right? Look, Rui. This would make the third disappearance. Haven't you been watching the news? Yeah, this is the third time that an acad academy student vanished off the face of the planet. 
and coincidentally, right after talking with Ivory. Technically, Midori disappeared before school started. Uh, yeah, just like two days before. Why are you so stubborn? Ivy's guilty. Why are you so stubborn? Maybe she's not. You clearly don't understand how people work. No wonder you don't have any friends. Rui's face closes in hurt, and a raw, fiery pang of rage courses through my body. I storm to her side, unceremoniously shoving away anyone in my path. Y Yama? Oh, you. Who's this, your boyfriend? My anger brief briefly sojourns into panic if I shove it away. You're all disgusting! Picking on s Oh wait, no. Uh, she- Yama's apathetic. <clears throat> You're all disgusting. Picking on someone just because she's not like you. Hey! You don't even know the context! Butt out! Oh, let me guess. You know everything. You know for certain that Aiko... Iri ...has anything to do with these disappearances. Twice is a coincidence. Thrice is a pattern. A pattern for narrow-sighted people who don't who won't take in any other factors. Are you stupid? There aren't any other patterns. The police said so themselves. Oh, and they told you this directly. It was on the news, moron! And it's not like the news has ever twisted the facts or told us anything but the honest truth. You wouldn't be acting so high and mighty if you knew how important Akane is. You wouldn't be acting so prejudiced if you had a brain. Words you weren't quite so low pitched last time. You were, you were apathetic, but you weren't quite so low. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, I'm turning on Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Words are spilling out of my mouth before I even consciously think of them. My whole body thrums with a cold, frozen hatred. F weird. Freak. Don't want to play with you. I'm not letting anyone else go through that. Not Rui. Not Irie. You think we're being rude to Irie? You're being rude to Shoji. Yeah, she was the love of Shoji's <coughs> life. Thank you. Sorry. Because everyone knows that every high school relationship lasts forever. You'll probably get over her in a week or two. A deadly silence descends on the group. Rui pinches my sleeve, her expression unusually troubled. That was a bit too far, Yama. I only clench my jaw and lock eyes with the boy called Shoji. His face blinks from panic to nothingness in less than a second. A chilled silence falls over the entrance. You! He staggers forward, raising a tremulous hand. You bastard! His fingers pull into a fist, and before I can blink, his hand is soaring straight at me. A shadow blurs in front of me, swiping at Shoji's arm. Shoji trembles to the tumbles to the ground, as if thrown by an unknown force. The moment is held on pause, broken only by the frantic whisperings of the gathering crowd around us. Shoji jerkily pushes himself to his feet, his footing loosed from fury. Ari idly steps in front of me, arms hanging limply by her sides. Her expression is passive, but something about it gives Shoji pause. What's going on over there? Oh! Oh! It's Patrick Starr. <laughs> Mr. Ryota pushes the throngs of students apart, books hiked under one arm. All the students start to babble at once. Mr. Ryota, Akani's been absent for.
for two days. Can't contact her. This guy provokes Shoji into a fight. Mr. Ryota waves his hand for silence, an unusually stern expression on his face. Shoji, are you hurt? No, sir. Good. Rui? Yes, Mr. Ryota? Meet me during lunch. You too, Noriko. Yes, Mr. Ryota. Both of you will give me your account on what just happened. I'll make the judgment after I've heard both stories. Understood? Sullen silence meets his inquiry. He only sighs. Accusations are for children. You guys know that, right? If you're going to claim something, use evidence. If you're going to fight, make sure you have the right reason. Dismissed. He waves his hands and scatters us off to class. You were just smiling so hard. I right? forgot how much I love your Mr. Ryuta Patrick Star voice. I forgot <laughs> how good it was. I love it so much. We head to the classrooms in silence, splitting ways at the staircase. I notice that Rui keeps close to Irie, stubbornly meeting the gaze of any gawkers in rote. <clears throat> well, looks like I'm going to get in trouble. Surprise, surprise. I probably shouldn't have interfered with that situation. I probably should have just stayed out of it. Usually I do. I know that high school is basically just a cesspool of idiocity. And idiocy. 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 And, and it's best to keep <laughs> out of it. No, not even high school life in general. But seeing that girl there, hedged in by such a large group of students, being accused with nothing to defend herself, and seeing Rui leap to her defense just like she did for me ten years ago? Well... I guess it brought out something that surprised even myself. If anyone has the right to suspect that girl, it should be me. First time I meet her walking alone in District 6, acting like some creepy mechanical doll, and then I learned that her reputation at school is sketchy at best. That's suspicious even by my standards, and I'm friends with Yahiko. <laughs> but it's possible that everything is a misunderstanding. It's possible that she really just wants friends, that she's a normal person inside and that she had a difficult time conveying her thoughts. I understand that feeling. I understand it more than anyone else. Ahem! They really like using question marks. I shake myself oh. out of my thoughts and take in my surroundings. Huh, looks like some of my morning classes have passed. Yeah, I totally wasn't paying attention. In front of me, three girls with hair and makeup arranged just like Elizabeth's, standing with very indignant, superior expressions. I quickly recognize them as the most avid members in her fan club. Hey, loser! We have something to say to you. Lucky me. They ignore me, crossing their arms in uncanny unison. We heard that you're giving Elizabeth a hard time. I glance at Elizabeth whose eyes are wide with panic. Interesting. Looks like she had no hand in this development. Then where did they get their information from? You better stop before we make you. Elizabeth deserves better. Idiots. I only snort and turn back to my homework. Hey, look at us! No thanks. I don't feel like vomiting. I think but managed to keep my mouth shut. Though thoroughly exasperated of these girls, I nod my head at Elizabeth and raise my eyebrow in warning. Her, pale, her face pales slightly, and she slides over to my desk, smiling faintly at the three girls. Hello. Oh, Elizabeth, this guy's been bothering you for a while, right? Elizabeth opens her mouth, clearly intent on agreeing with the girl, but I shake my head ever so slightly. She grits her teeth together, but somehow manages to keep her smile intact. Thank you for your concern, but it's fine. It's really fine. The girls blink in clear surprise. Oh, um, are you sure? You were just saying the other day... 
saying? Say, saying what? I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> the little mouths in this game just get to me all the time. Also, I'm trying to remember. I think I used Elizabeth as almost my normal voice. So almost. And almost like a Twilight. Yeah. Almost Twilightish. Yeah, okay. Because she's class rep and super smart. And... Yeah, I, I think I try, kind of went normal me voice on it. Yeah. All right. She sends an uneasy glance at me. I just only smile innocently. This really shouldn't be fun, but it is. Remarkably so. I thought Yama was bothering... No, no, it was, um, a misunderstanding. Oh, um, alright. They nod slightly at me, like that's an adequate apology. We're keeping an eye on you. Don't mess with Elizabeth! Then they strut out of the classroom, their footsteps in perfect unison. I turn to Elizabeth. She grips the edge of her seat until her knuckles turn white. I really can't believe you. Hmm? You're enjoying this, aren't you? Despicable. She turns away from me in a huff. Uh, excuse me. I'm not even the one who started it all. Heck, she's the one who's constantly picking a fight. It's always been that way. Whatever. This isn't even worth th thinking about. I turn my attention back to the front of the classroom as the break comes to an end. The rest of the morning classes slug by uneventfully. This time, Elizabeth is clearly sulking. Misaki is just as focused as ever. And by focused, I mean that she's on her phone the entire period. Misaki was a slightly motherly voice. That was it. Okay, I remember her. <clears throat> when lunchtime comes, I tap Yahiko on the shoulder as I grab my backpack. Oh, it's time. <clears throat> Tamaki voice! Hey, lunch? Huh? What? Lunch. Cafeteria. Oh, yeah! Sure! Right! Cafeteria! Yeah, do you remember how to do Yahiko's voice? <laughs> Something wrong? Nope! Nothing! Absolutely nothing wrong! Oh my god. I was just thinking, you know? It'd be nice to have a couple more minions. Isn't that what your club is for? Club? The blank look on his face is foreign to me! I slap him on the back. You know, a club that'll take over the universe. Your, uh, minions. Ugh, clearly I'm really bad at this. Whoa! Huh. It's lunchtime! When was it? Did I time travel? I wasn't oh ready god, for this. Oh my god, Yahiko! I wasn't I'm ready so for this. <laughs> this is like your favorite voice I think you've ever done, so this makes me really happy. Between this and Patrick Star. A quick, yeah. a quick sigh of relief passes my lips before I'm able to spot it. Seems like Yahiko's back to normal. Yeah, it's 4018 AD. You've been asleep for 2,000 years. Hi. I have? I don't feel that rested. Well, we kept you in cryo-freeze during a light stage of your sleep cycle rather than in REM. You mean I was scammed on 2,000 years of deep sleep? More Tomaki lost rarity, but you're there. <laughs> on the contrary, you were saved from 2,000 years of homework. Oh, I guess you're right! I wonder when he'll realize that I'm not supposed to be alive. Well, super realistic hologram Yama, shall we go get some lunch? Or do you guys still eat that kind of thing? Or he could make a totally ridiculous yet somehow plausible assumption. Indeed we do. Then what are we waiting for? I want to see what kind of cuisine has developed after 2,000 years! Thoroughly re-energized, he skips out the door. I'm just about to follow, but I feel a sudden tap on my elbow. 
I'm gonna damn guess it. it's a girl. I'm gonna guess it's a girl. Go I suspect it. it's Yava Ishimoto. Oh no, it's her! Oh fuck! It's high pitched baby girl voice. I can do this. <sighs> it's the girl from the cafe. Natsuki, was it? Yeah, I have to do baby girl voice. I glance at Elizabeth. She's in the middle of some fluffy small talk with her groupies, and intentionally keeping her back to me. Lizzie's over there. I'm aware of that. She isn't the one for whom I wish to speak. What do you want? I have a simple question for you. As far as I can tell, nothing simple when it comes to this girl. Have you ever felt like two people are fighting for your body? Whoa. What? More specifically, fighting for control of your body. Like, mind control? No, more like two different entities in the situation in simultaneous residence, resulting in widely different actions or process of thought. A chill runs up my spine. I'd like to think it'd be fairly obvious if I'm going through something like that. Well, you may or may not have any recollections of the other identity. Something about her mysterious smile sets me on edge. What's with the sudden questions? Psychology paper? We're studying dissociative identity disorder. Which is... Well, really, it's known as multiple personality disorder. I would say that you should know of it already, but perhaps your alter ego surfaces during psychology class. I clench my jaw at her obvious accusations, searching to find an answer in her face. I find none. So, do I look like the kind of person who has multiple personality disorder? Do you want to know the answer to that question? Look, I gotta go. I'm sorry. Try asking Elizabeth. She's the one who rapidly switches between being nice and being a pain in the ass. She only nods and smiles, but I sense her eyes pouring through the back of my head as I slip out of the classroom. I might not have gone falsetto with the baby girl voice. It might have been up here with a little bit baby voice like this. I don't think so, though. I think I was falsetto high-pitched baby. Either way, that's what it is now. I think she's the mysterious figure, and I kind of agree with the chat's early assumption that we're the murderer. With I think Mr. Ryoto might be the murderer. Think so? You think yeah. this is a red herring? Yeah. Okay. I attempt to shake off the encounter as I head to the cafeteria, but Natsuki's words linger in the back of my mind. I, like, the game wouldn't show its cards so early on. I don't know, though. I honestly don't know. Thankfully, when I arrive, Yakiko immediately waves me over, face cheerily shining. Have a seat, my loyal minion! Today's special is baby back ribs! I can see that from your plate. You can divine stuff from my plate? Look into my love life fortune! He's acting awfully normal. Did he already forget that he's supposed to be 2,000 years into the future? Just eat. Well, I suppose I'll let it slide this time, but a master is supposed to command his minions, not the other way around. Exactly. What? Nothing. I glance around the cafeteria as I start on my own plate. I recognize quite a few faces. I'll just I'll just say this straight up now. If the murderer kills Yahiko, I'll never forgive him. <laughs> I hate him and he's awful, but they're not allowed to kill him. <laughs> Natsuki and Elizabeth surprised, surrounded by groupies. Masato and a few track members. Masato's effort man! Akira and a few drama club members. Rui's absent, probably speaking to Mr. Ryota on my behalf. Misaki too. Though, I rarely see her around outside of class. And in the quarter, eating alone, is Irie. 
She appears to be satisfying herself with her own plate of ribs. That is not a rib. That That's is. A that is a penis. got penis out of that. Good job, honey. Oh, I saw, like, the shaft and... Okay. And a peach! <laughs> and her, her mouth's just open and she's ready to jump into the peach. Okay. Never mind. Something about the picture looks empty. Lonely. Say, that gives me an idea. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's gonna send Yahiko over. He's gonna send Yahiko over to her. Oh, my God. It's time. So how's it been with the ladies? Hmm? Need you even ask? Fantabulous, of course! Would you mind teaching this humble servant your ways? I thought you would never ask! But why now? I try to wave off his question as by gesturing in Irie's direction. So how about her? Oh, someone's caught your eye, have they? His eyes flicker in Irie's direction. I expect him to coo about how adorable she is, how lovely her hair is, how perfect her nose or chin or whatever is. But he only pauses, his brow furrowed in frustration. Huh. What is it? She looks kind of familiar. Like, really familiar. Ordinarily, I'd like to think that he's crafting a pickup line, but his bewilderment seems genuine. Where'd you see her? Uh, I have no clue. Eventually, she he just shrugs off with an easygoing grin. Well, my good minion, we shouldn't be wasting time! Watch and learn from the great master! Well, guess it's not important. As always, it would be an honor to see your spectacular techniques. I know, right? You should be grateful I'm not making you pay tuition for such enlightening lessons. Well, they're certainly enlightening, but probably not in the way he's thinking. I bet that the number of girls you've seduced is uncountable. You got that right! Well, technically zero is uncountable. First lesson, my dear apprentice, never waste time! Oh my god. Are they eating? Great! Depressed and withdrawn? Fantastic! Saying that they want to be alone? Perfect! Love waits for nobody, Yama. Remember that. I can't help but chuckle at how terrible his advice is. Really By any chance, have you ever gotten slapped? Oh yeah! All the time! Why is he saying that like it's a badge of honor? You see, evoking a strong reaction means that you've touched the young lady's heart. The line between love and hate is thinner than the line between love and apathy. Frieza has hiccups. That's why the most important thing is to leave a big impression. That's unusually perceptive. On that note, we're wasting time. There's a, an adorable lass to seduce. Yahiko promptly skips over to Irie, eyebrows raised in a flirtatious attack. I'm ready. Hey, how does it feel to be the most beautiful girl in the room? Looks like the Ikari is already hitting hard. How will his opponent respond? It's not very effective. Uh, can I see your uniform tag? I gotta see if you are made in heaven. A spectacular hit! How will the last dodge out of this one? China. Huh? Uniforms are made in China. Ikari staggers back from the fatal counter. Uh, well, I wasn't... I, I mean... It seems that he's in a state of shock. 
the last seizes this opportunity for an offensive maneuver. Your food. Wh what? Will you eat it? Hey! Wh what are you doing to my ribs? It's a critical hit. The last's bold move has paralyzed Akari. You're... You're... You're gonna get fat if you eat so much! I'm 102 pounds. You're... You're what? But you can't be that short! 5 feet, 2 inches. She's my size. She's my size, like, minus 25 pounds. Uh, it's super effective! Ikari is silenced! The last spends her free turns munching at her newly acquired meal. It's sort of adorable. Like a baby hamster munching at back in but anyway, back to the match. Ikari studies the last for a moment, no doubt attempting to paralyze any potential weak points. This girl's a tough one! Usually I don't allow things like this, but Yama, why don't you give it a shot? Nah, I'm just the commenter of this battle. <laughs> Commentator. Commentator. <laughs> this battle. What? Nothing. Thankfully, Akari decides to switch his attention from the lowly commentator back to his original target. Why aren't you responding? You should be honored that someone like me is paying attention to someone like you. Don't tell me! You don't swing that way! I'm straight. A clean hit at his vital point! It's looking bad for Akari. Then... then why? The match merely f the last m merely finishes up Ikari's ribs and moves on to her own. Are you a witch who took some weird potion to resist me? Why are you unaffected by my charms? Ikari's gone berserk. He's attempting a wild hay haymaker. Stop ignoring me! Forget it! You're just like the other commoners! You don't deserve being seduced by a superior being like me! Answer me when I'm talking to you! My meat is getting cold. <laughs> what an amazing oh display God. of indirect trash talking! The last has just placed Ikari below some humble baby back ribs! You! You! Hey, they're baby back ribs, bitch. Come on. Akari hurt himself in conf his confusion. <laughs> Meanie! B bully! I'll have my revenge, I'll tell you. REVENGE! I'll have my revenge, I tell you. <laughs> Reading up red, freeze. <laughs> and Akari exits the ring. Automatic forfeit! Instant KO! Nothing. As Irie finishes up the meat on her plate, I settle into the chair next to her. It's hard to tell from the stoic expression on her face, but she seems a little happier than a few moments ago. Do you want my ribs? Didn't you eat them all? Then why did you offer? Then why are you here? At the very least, she's more open than when I met her yesterday. I'm sitting. Sitting is nice. 
Her expression doesn't even budge. Sitting makes the world go round. And sitting is good for you. It's bad for you. Her sudden response catches me off guard. What? At least she's talking to me. That's a start. How can sitting be bad for you? Higher risk in obesity, higher cholesterol, lower back pain, cardiovascular disease, and type 2 diabetes. She says this so mon monotonously that I can't tell whether she's joking or deathly serious. But sitting doesn't cause that, right? I reevaluates me for a moment and only returns to her food without a word. I'm searching for a different topic to discuss when she abruptly speaks again. What's your name? Yama. Yama Ishimoto. Hmm. 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 You're not going to comment on it? Hmm. You know, it's an unusual name. Like the Rouge Lampard. The Rouge Lampard. As in from Code Deus? You know it? Vaguely? It's a fairly popular series among young adults. I'm surprised that someone like her would know about it. Well, next to the Rouge Lampard, there can't be many strange names. Irie only reaches into her backpack and begins to munch on a peach. For a moment, I peck, pick at my ribs in silence, but she speaks again. What is your deus? My what? Deus. Special power. I'm not sure where she's going with this, but I might as well follow her. My special power is creating sardines out of thin air. Hmm. Hmm. She doesn't seem phased in the slightest. Uh, both? So, freshly canned? I guess. Make some now. Sardines? Mm. Of the many weird situations I've encountered over the course of my short life, this might take the top. She's joking, right? Sure. I flourish my hand and tap the table. There. Sardines. That's the table. What is she expecting to see? Actual spontaneous materializations of freshly canned sardines? You know I can't actually make sardines out of thin air, right? You said you could. Either she's better at trolling than I am, or she really wasn't joking. I wasn't serious. Then why did you say it? I'm too baffled by her thought process to make an intelligible reply. Thankfully, Irie only returns to nibbling at her peach, as if she never asked the question. The awkward silence is punctuated by the signature school bell, an opportunity that I take with gratitude. Well, see you. She blinks widely at me. My name is Irene Hiraga. Okay. That was abrupt. I didn't tell you before. She suddenly stands, picks up her tray, and strides to the opposite side of the cafeteria to dump her dishes. Well, that was random. What an eccentric girl. I like her. Uh, General Hodoish is in the chat, and he's actually in love with her. Like, <laughs> this is, I'm pretty sure Irie Hiraga is, is his new waifu. <laughs> unless, unless by telling me her name, she's trying to say that she trusted me, or that she'd like to become friends. Maybe she has some kind of mental disability that inhibits her social functions. She's off Yeah, beat, General Hodoish. But interesting. I can see why she became the scapegoat. It's unlikely that the other students are scared by her unorthodox behavior. She just... Just because she's different, she becomes the bad guy.
They should know better. They should give her a chance. Afternoon classes are another dreary pass. While you yawn, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to the chat. How's that sound? <laughs> okay. Hi, Brian Neckers. Hi, Cogbussle. Hi, Commander Root. Hi, General Honoish. Hi, Host Giveaway. Hi, Jay. <coughs> Hi, Poilzy. Or, I, I'm going to learn how to... Poilzy. I'm going to learn how to say your name one day, I promise. Positivity Bot, Skinny Seahorse, and Slow Cool. Nice to see all of you here. Welcome. We're playing Lucid 9. Shall we continue? Afternoon classes are another dreary pass. This time, even Yahiko is sullen, staring into his desk and murmuring nonsensical words under his breath. The moment the bell rings, Masato blazes into the classroom and lunges for me. Instinctively, oh. I instinctively crawl beneath the desk, bracing myself for full measure of his fury. It's time for... effort points. YOU! I glance around the classroom. Yahiko is staring blankly at Masato. Elizabeth is once again immersed in conversation with her groupies. Misaki is... Misaki! I wave frantically in her direction, but she's too immersed in her phone to pay me any heed. You know how many days you skipped track! It's more effortful like you're trying to... Oh. Uh, three? WRONG! The answer is too many! Less gravelly. More, more child. Just effortful child. Okay. Hey, look, I've been busy. Like hell you been! Busy with what? Napping? Eating? Thinking? That's better, yes. Alright, he's got a point. You disappoint me, man! Yeah? Join the club. Damn it! Just stop ditching! Damn it! Well, I don't blame him! God damn it. Oh, no, it's me! Well, I don't blame him. Rui strides into the room. She hesitates when she sees Misaki, but shakes it off in the blink of an eye. What makes you say that? Eh? Well, you know, all you talk about is track. Yama's probably tired of hearing it by now. But I don't just run, I can swim too, and do basketball! She ignores him, and the approaching Misaki, and gently smiles gently at me. Don't worry, Mr. Ryuta says you're not in trouble. Mr. Ryuta? I would... Oh shit, Shoji, the fight. But that's not important right now. You just added the shit in there, I love it, good job. <laughs> said, oh right, you went, oh shit! <laughs> now then. He has to, she has to save me from Mas Masato. Say, Rui, don't you think it's awfully late and we should be... A Misaki rushes in front of me, reaching for Rui's hands. Rui, I need to speak with you about... Rui only takes a step back from both of us, staring blankly at Misaki. Why won't you listen? You told me the other day to leave you- I told you the other day to leave me alone. It's you who isn't listening. She whips around on one heel and marches out of the room. Oh, shack it. This too- This too ill to dealt great. Wait, what did you just- she flies past me and sprints out of the room, right on Rui's heels. Masato stares wordlessly at her back, mouth agape. That girl! <laughs> Miyazaki! She was talking street! Talking what? Nothing. Ain't nothing. Wait, did you understand her? Uh... Uh... Hang it! You're just changing the subject again, ain't you? What? What? Me? No... You gotta come to track, man! I'll drag you there myself! Time to resort to drastic measures, since I was ditched by everyone. 
Actually, where did Yakiko go? Oh, that's weird. Well, what's it gonna be? Oh, would you look at the time? I gotta go. Don't do it, man! Don't! I promptly run for my life. Lunging over desks and chairs and bowling down the hallway. There's only one safe place for being bulldozed by his fury. One place that can be a haven for a refugee. I slam my fist against the door, ignoring the bewildered stares of passing students. Mr. Ryota! Mr. Ryota! Open up before I die! Oh, dad never, kid. Why do you always have to interrupt me in the middle of a battle? Nevertheless, the door creaks open. I jump in and kick it shut, twisting the lock with what may or may not have been a little more force than necessary. Mr. Ryota is staring at me with eyebrows lifted and mouth slightly agape, no doubt taking in my unkempt mass of hair and sweat beating on my forehead. First to fight, now running from someone? You'll just love trouble today, don't you, kid? Probably more like trouble loves me. Oh, kid, important life lesson. Trouble only finds people who are looking for it. So basically, I deserve everything that happens to me. Oh, I didn't say that. Just that sometimes people who want nothing more in life than to go through, do nothing significant, and pass on in peace, well, they actually want a whole lot more. I don't understand. Well then, maybe we should talk about something else. I hesitantly take a seat and glance over my shoulder, no side of the marvelous Masa. Since you're here, I guess we better have a proper session. Why are you being chased, hmm? Too popular with the girls? Ha! <laughs> As if. It was Masato Kuragane. He loves track. And I don't. So he's trying to change that. And I presume. <clears throat> and I presume it's not working out so hot for you. Yeah, I, you could say that. Actually, it seems like Masato's always been on my case because of track. Even the first time we met. Well, it was that last year's club recruitment day. I remember hating that time. Well, to be fair, I hated everything. But especially club recruitment day. No matter how quiet and insignificant I tried to be, someone would always call me out every minute. And they'd try to get me to join language club, or music club, or art club, or even squirrel watching club. As you can imagine, by the time I met Masato, I wanted to do nothing wanted nothing to do with clubs, especially from someone who, frankly speaking, looked like a stereotypical idiot jock. That's hey, you. Hey, you! But contrary to popular belief, I actually did have some semblance of manners. So I stopped and turned to address this bothersome kid. Not interested. I expected some fake smile or even some pleading, but to my shock, the guy immediately pulled back his fist and socked me right in the face! Ow, what the hell? Don't give me that bull! I ain't even said nothing yet! Awful... <laughs> Awful rude of you not to even give me a chance! You know what we call that? You know what we call that? Uncivilized! I'm uncivilized? You're the one who just punched me. Aw, oh, you big baby, that wasn't even a gentle tap! The terrible thing was that he looked completely serious about it. To be honest, I briefly entertained the thought that he was part of an abusive household or something. Of course, the guy took my thoughtful silence for penitence and steamed ahead. That's more like it! Name's Masato! Masato Kuragane! What's yours? Leaving. You're leaving? Yeah, right now. Call me rude, but I was at my breaking point. Getting a fist straight to the nose wasn't exactly welcoming. I might have admired the guy's courage and utter disregard for several niceties, but other than that, he bugged me. A lot. Oh, I see what you did there! But you can't leave! Not before you join track! 
track. Hell yeah! Our club, man! It binds you for life, makes you sweat, gives you pain, stretches your physical constitution until you think you're gonna die! And this guy thought that was a great sales pitch? He had a long way to go. Yeah, not interested. That ain't all, man! Track can save your life! Just think, just like it saved mine! Saved his life? Yeah, right. Good for you. Ain't it? Track's literally a lifesaver, man! Yeah, thanks, but no thanks. Hey, where you going? I'm just getting, I'm just getting to the best part! I cried on the inside, but patiently nodded my head. If you get good enough, you can get a scholarship! This place don't come cheap, you know. Even a little amount would help your parents. Hmm, things were beginning to make sense. Is that why you're in track? Uh, come to think of it, you still haven't told me your name. Interestingly enough, I found that I was actually beginning to like this guy. At least he wasn't superficial like everyone else. If anything, he was the opposite. He wore his heart on his sleeve. Besides, I needed to do something to do while Rui was in drama. What else was I going to join? Art? Dance? Squirrel watching? I'm Yama. Yama Ishimoto. Huh? What kind of name is that? My parents liked poetry. No way! Oh gosh, she's probably going to rant about how poetry and literature is a waste of time. Who's their favorite? <laughs> Mato... Matsuo Bashu? Basho? Kobayashi Isa? Or maybe foreign guys like Ed Edgar Allan Poe or William Shakespeare? They, sped Edgar they spelled Edgar Allan Poe wrong. So the two names I can always spell because his middle name is spelled like mine. So, ha! <laughs> what the? You like poetry? Of course I do! Poetry is the manliest way to cry! This guy only got stranger. What about literature? Manliest way to hate people! Okay, so that <laughs> checks out. <laughs> Science? Manliest way to take stuff apart! Math? Manliest way to put stuff together! History? Manliest way to predict the future! Is this toxic masculinity? I think this is the opposite of toxic masculinity. I think, I think this is this is this is the, an example of like wholesome masculinity. <laughs> <laughs> By any chance, what are your grades? Average of ninety nine. No way. The highest class average I ever had was 92. This guy was smarter than me. I I don't understand you at all. It's okay. You don't need to. You just gotta join track. I just spat on my keyboard. Then you know you're doing it right, because you spat on your keyboard last time I recorded, too. Good. On second thought, I didn't think he was smarter, just studied harder. Still, it took guts and passion and everything I didn't have. <coughs> okay, I'll try, uh, I'll try it out, but only for a little bit. Ha! I knew you'd come around! Come on, let's get to track! Already? Don't you have other unfortunate souls to recruit? Nah, the others will take care of them. Let's go! And that was how I met Masato. I never really... I was never really a regular track member, but for some reason he always wanted me to be. Even now, I don't really understand why. He probably just wants to help people become their best. Then why would he pick me? Me? when there's so many other people who would love track, running in competitions and all that crap. Isn't that the whole point of picking you? Because I'm useless, so turning me into somebody useful means a lot? Nah, because you're a challenge. You know, that doesn't exactly make me feel any better. Why not? You should feel very, very loved. Oh, I do. A bit too loved. <coughs> Masato probably likes, sees you like a little cousin or a younger brother. Do you know that? 
What? <clears throat> Masato does? Why, why would he do that? You know, kid, sometimes there's just nice people in the world, and you shouldn't question it. And sometimes there are ulterior motives behind everything. Masa Masato Kuragane? Ulterior motives? <laughs> that was kind of a creepy laugh, right? Yeah, it started out like very Ryuto, and then it kind of morphed into your laugh, and it was really weird that it did that. <laughs> okay. Well, that's true, I guess. It's not like Masato would fake anything, but it still doesn't make any sense. <sighs> Why would he choose me, a random stranger, as his little brother? To be honest, I usually thought of Masato as my little brother, since he's, you know, kind of obtuse and not cynical and embittered by the world. Something like that. A kind of innocence. Maybe you shouldn't be asking why your friends love you, Yama. Maybe you should be looking for ways to return that love, instead of looking for ways to deserve it. Huh. Hmm? I sounded really cool, didn't I? Oh my god, Mr. I'm Mr. leaving. Oh, come on. Kid, that was good. Admit it. I admit it. I am still leaving. He only chuckles and slaps a hand on my shoulder. Have a good day, kid. I only nod wordlessly in response as I step out of his office. My throat almost feels clogged, as if I'd heard something that I'd really, really needed to hear. Huh. Maybe these meetings really are a good thing. I think that's probably Masato. <sighs> wow! Move those legs, you filthy maggots! Move them! Double time! You almost went into like... <laughs> I know, I cast. know, I know. Oh. I hate these question marks. Wanna try it? What the heck? Oh! oh her. What is her voice? What is her voice? What the fuck is her voice? God, I don't remember. She's only appeared like twice. I can give her sword. I think I gave her one of. Because I gave some people pony toys. Did I give her Pinkie Pie or did I try to give her Applejack? Because I know I gave one person Applejack. I think she's Pinkie Pie. I think so too. <clears throat> Let me have a sip of this before I go to Pinkie Pie because that's not an easy voice for me. Alright, here we go. We got this. Okay, I'm ready. I peer around, searching for the source of the noise, and find Akira racing around the entrance, a large, lumpy hunt backpack slung over her shoulders. I'm oh, sorry. Please, pretty please. I've been running six miles. I swear I'm gonna collapse. Oh, I, that's me. I should be able to hear you over the sound of your tears. Private hop to it. Oh, I can't do it right now. Oh my god. Uh, Akira? I gingerly step in front of her and wave to catch her attention. She grinds to a halt, tilting her head curiously at me. What are you doing here? I'm here for drama club, of course. But no one else is here. I'm doing the first exercise, loot. I'm assuming that's lieutenant. Yeah. An immersion exercise. I'm gonna run a mile around the school with this backpack. A mile? But that backpack looks as big as her. Boot camp? Is that why you're calling me loot? Nah, I'm calling you loot because loot is short. For lieutenant? Well, there are nice socks, don't you catch on fast? Usually, her antics would annoy me. But for some reason, it's soothing right now. Like white noise in a messy world. Do you usually do things this intense for Drama Club? Oh, no, this is easy. You should see what I had to do yesterday. I was a sadistic serial killer. 
Okay. What did you do for that? I ate a bunch of cereal. I'm fucking done. I'm done with this game. <laughs> I can't do this. <laughs> That fucking joke. <laughs> I, I, I love this game. This is amazing. Okay. This is amazing. Oh, uh, chat's mad. Chat's mad. I, I'm mad. I'm mad. This was, that, was, that was angering. Good lord. They hit me when I wasn't ready. Like, at all. Yama wasn't ready either. I'm not sure whether to feel relieved or exasperated. I think we've made our decision. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Blues, if you don't have anything to do right now, why don't you join us? We're doing some exercises that you might really like. What makes you think I'll like them? From what Rui says. What exactly does she say? That you like exercise. That you'll like the exercises. Wow. I think wow. I finally got rid of the bouncing girl twining different voice. Thank God. That's cyclical logic. On the contrary, it has nothing to do with life. Oh my god. I can't. I'm saying these lines and I'm, I'm breaking down a little after every time I say one of hers. <laughs> okay. Okay. I love her! Can we date her? I like her a lot. Sigh. Well, technically, I don't have anything to do. Wait, Rui will be there? Oh, her shit! I thought that a silent Akira would be a blessing, but it's just unsettling. We really have something to do today. But if you come tomorrow, you can watch her bedazzle the crowd! Tomorrow's Saturday, isn't it? Oh, is it? You don't know what day of the week it is? Tuesday for my character. And in my defense, there's half days on Saturdays. To snow clubs, which is kind of important. She doesn't seem to hear me. Instead, she just checks her phone for the time. Hey! Boot camp is that big. What about your mile? Let's go! She reaches out and grabs my wrist. But suddenly lets go as if it's burning iron. I send a questioning look at her, but she only shrugs it off. <coughs> Come, Loot! Adventure away! Without any further explanation, she marches into the classroom building. Well, this should be interesting. Akira leads me in the classroom 3A, where a dozen students are seated in a ring, looking expectantly at Akira. One of the girls immediately leaps to her feet. I recognize her as the drama club president. Where have you been, maggot? You know how late it is? Immediately, Akira stumbles forward as if she's dead exhausted, the backpack sliding from her shoulders and crashing to the ground. Sorry, sir. I... I took a detour. A detour? What kind of detour can take on a... can you take on a training course? Akira? Is she Akira right now? Points a tremulous finger in my direction. <coughs> Sir? Out of nowhere! I... I don't even know how he got here! All eyes swivel to me, waiting to see how I handled this sudden development. They're probably expecting me to dodge out, to freeze, or to just stare at them like they're a bunch of weirdos. Heck, I'm expecting me to do something along those lines. But instead, sheer instinct takes over. Years of make-believe with Rui molds me into what is needed at the moment, a foreign spy who haplessly stumbled into a military operation. Uh, sorry, I... I'm a tourist. Lost my way. I subtly move my hand to my hip, where my imaginary gun holster lies. Surprisingly, the club present is perceptive enough to catch it. He's a spy! Right as I pretend to whip out my gun, Akira tackles my arm, throwing me to the ground. I feel a shot of pain run up my shoulder, ripping a very real cry of agony from my throat. Akira proceeds to deftly lock my arms behind my back, leaning over until her mouth is next to my ear. Gun. Through my haze of pain, I manage to hold my character together. Akira nudges my arm, gently this time, and I yell, opening my fingers in a releasing motion.
The club president kneels down, looking me straight in the eye. I tilt my head upward, staring as challengingly as I possibly can. Nice one. Strangers don't usually pick up so easily. The entire room relaxes as she sits before me, bowing her head slightly. Welcome to the drama club. I'm the club president. Sorry you came on a pretty hectic day. No, it was interesting. Akira, could you let go of me? Akira suddenly squeaks, lunging away from me. That face! <clears throat> An uncharacteristic blush crawls through her cheeks as she vainly attempts to cover her face with her hands. It's really unusual for her, but kind of cute. It almost reminds me of Rui. I suppose they rubbed off on each other at this point. A. Hey. Quickly disregarding these thoughts, I focus back to my physical status and move my arm back to its regular position. It twinges painfully. I can't hide a wince, which the prep club president immediately notices. Slow down, okay? You're beginning to eat your words. Oh, I'm numb. Yeah. Oh, gosh! Are you okay? Hmm? I test my arm for a moment, but the pain subsided. Probably just overstretched slightly. Nah, I should be fine. It's nothing compared to what Miki's made me do before. Whoa. D did I hurt you? I'm really <laughs> sorry, Yama. Thank you again. I'm sorry. Pop up your own line. It's fine, really. What? Are you sure? It's unsettling to see Akira so meek. I glance at the club president and raise an eyebrow. She seems to understand. Well, let's try basic exercise for our next scenario. Stanislavski's magic in everyone! The rest of the club time is spent playing around with different objects, pretending that pencils are bombs, chairs are clouds, and tests are shields. It's amazingly refreshing. I'd almost forgotten how fun it was to just put everything aside and enter a completely different world. Even when the club's been dismissed, I feel a sense of lightness that I haven't felt in a long time. Hey, Loot! Akira pops up next to me, now returned to her cheery self. Hey, where are you headed? Home! Don't you live in the dorms? Anywhere I go is my home. Oh god, she's homeless. Bizarre as always, the only thing I've grown to understand about this girl is that I'll never understand her. Right. Seriously, where are you going? Uh. Come to think of it, I have no clue where I'm going. Catch you later, Luke. Later. And without any further explanation, she skips away. I shrug off my confusion, accepting it as the norm when one speaks with Akira, and head back to my apartment. Except something stops me at the entrance. Okay. Theory. Okay. Akira likes us, but knows that Rui also likes us, and is trying to give Rui space. Well... Akira has been def desperately trying to set us up with Rui for a while. True. Do you want to deal with Milo? Yeah, let me see what's going on. Alright, I'll give a quick um, shout out to the chat. Hi, Brian Neckers. Hi, Cog Whistle. Hi, Commander Root. Hi, General Honoish. Hi, Host Giveaway. Hi, James. Hi, Polize. Hi, Positivity Bot. Hi, Red Dragon. Hi, Skinny Seahorse. And hi, Slow Cool. Nice to have you watching us as we play Lucid Nine. We're getting to know some of the characters again, and I'm desperately trying to remember all of the different girls' voices. There are so many! Um, we'll have to see what happens. What do you guys think of Akira? I know that General Honoish deeply prefers Irie. I like Rui. Like, we have so many girls to choose from. Who is your favorite Animeme girl? Animeme! Yeah. It's it's a it's what Brian just said. I'm quoting it. <laughs> I'll leave General Tony's like, I raise mine. <laughs> oh. Well, 
Let's keep pushing through. We got probably about 20 minutes before we need to <gasps> call it. Okay. Except something stops me at the entrance. Do you need a second? By this time, all the students are living it up in town, or doing nobody knows what in the school rec center. Nobody just hangs around the entrance. For most, the bars, gate, and curfew are just another sign of the restrictions instituted by helicopter parents. But beneath the shade of the tree in the far corner, I catch sight of two figures facing each other with hands on hips. Oh, good. I inch oh. forward. The figures are none other than Misa Misaki and Rui, immersed in conversation. Why must you keep ignoring me, Rui? Because you've been gone... Sorry. Because you've been gone for four years, Masaki! We didn't know where you went and even why you had to leave. All these years, Yama and I were left in the dark. For all we knew, you could have been dead. How can you expect us to act like you never left? I still don't understand how Yama can be so forgiving after... After he almost... You know what? I'm tired of this. Just don't ever speak to me again, Misaki. She turns to stalk off, but Misaki grabs her wrist in a blink of an eye. I'm not letting you walk away again, damn it. Do you believe that I wanted to leave Seto? To move to District 6 with my mother? Who, by the way, doesn't even deserve to be called my mother. What I don't understand is why you're blaming me for something I couldn't control. Misaki's sudden outburst seems to catch Rui off guard. District 6 doesn't deserve to be called my mother. Just what happened to Misaki after she left Seto? Misaki, you're hurting my wrist! Oh, I'm sorry, Rui. I, I shouldn't have. The two girls seem to avoid each other's gazes for an awkward moment. Rui is the first to speak. Her voice coming out in barely a whisper. Half a year after you left, we gave up. We thought you'd never contact us again. I was okay. But Yama, he thought that someone had left him. Again. Forever. Oh, fuck. Oh. He thought that people would just keep leaving him. That no one would ever stay by his side. Because our parents. Also, I think we have a sister. I think we had a sister who died, remember? Yeah. But, yeah. He locked himself in his room. Pulled himself into a shell. I couldn't reach him. No one could. He just didn't trust any of us to stay. Then... Then I dropped by his house one day and... And the medicine cabinet was open, and this huge bottle was gone! You... you mean... Yeah. You know how hands-off his parents have always been. The ambulance barely made it in time. They had to start pumping him on site. That's how bad it was. Was it really that bad? So, you understand why I was so upset. I... I had no idea, Rui. Just where were you, Miki? Why... Why couldn't you have just... Rui breaks off and covers her face with her hands. Misaki's expression crumples. She hesitantly reaches towards Rui. And Rui promptly kicks her in the shin. Dummy! Miki! Why did it take so long? Yo! Why weren't you there for Yama? Why were you there for... for me? Uh, I missed you! Rui! 
and now they're draped against each other, sobbing like newborn children. What just happened? I quietly inch away from the scene, feeling the sudden sense they needed privacy. At least they made up, well, from the looks of it. It almost seemed like Rui was just really overwhelmed from keeping secrets. My memory of that time is very faint, but hers, hers must be crystal clear. The terror, her anguish when she stumbled on me, must have been festering inside her all these years, because mentioning anything could have sent me over the brink. She always had to fake smiles, put me first, pick me up when I had fallen down. Oh, the edges. Something itches in the back of my mind. A weird kind of dizziness threatening to overcome me. I force it back until I become more detached. I really, really don't want to think about that time, but thankfully I can suppress it for now. But Rui, she was never one to hide away from her feelings. She faced that pain full force. What a wonder that seeing Miki again had brought all that back to the surface. And Miki. She had moved to District 6 with Saitomi, something she hadn't told me when I first saw her two days ago. Why would she resent her mother so passionately? Also, why would they move to District 6, the most poverty-stricken area of Isamu? It certainly makes me curious, but then again, it's really none of my business. At least she and Rui are friends again. So maybe now the three of us can go back to the way we were. I'm going to throw a save down. I think that's a really good idea. I was going to actually ask about that. I can't hide a smile as I lounge against the couch after whipping some dinner, replaying the exchange in my head. I'm glad they've made up. Really glad. Somehow it feels like a big burden has been lifted off me even though I technically had nothing to do with the argument. And now I'm getting all sappy. Let's see, what should I do tonight? Oh, oh no, we have to let the chat choose. We have to let the chat choose. Do we work on homework with somebody or do we watch Govermecker? Gover for those who don't remember, Govermecker is a badly made anime that Yahiko is a part of involving mechs and America. It's really bad and really amazing, and I, I feel like no matter what you say, chat, we're just going to choose a Govermecker, because I don't want to do homework. I want to do Govermecker! I appreciate that, but both of our votes don't matter, and so far the chats have been saying, what? homework, homework! Ah, but Govermecker! But we can go do homework with Rui! How do you know that's going to happen? More likely we're going to do it with Yahiko! I don't know! But I want to take that chance! But, it's your turn, chat. You get to choose. So we've got two votes for homework. I'm going to call out other people. Brian Necros, Cog, Whistle, Commander, General Hanumish, Host Giveaway, Jame, uh, Polizier, Pri Positivity Bot, Red Dragon, Skinny Seahorse, Slow Cool. Please weigh in in the chat right now. Let us know what you'd like us to do, Govermecker or homework. Oh man, it sounds like we're going to end up choosing homework. I'll give it like five more seconds, see if anyone will weigh in. <laughs> oh my god, okay. Okay, last chance. Fine, fine, when everyone says homework, let's do some fucking homework. Hmm, I guess I should actually study. Not that I'd ever do it alone. If I'm going to be miserable, I might as well be miserable with someone else. Yeah! Oh no! It's oh, time! No! It's time! Priest Chat! Got up, walk around the room. Choose your waifu! We actually get to choose a woman. Or Masato, or Yahiko. Alright, let's go through this. Elizabeth is the brainy girl with the purple hair who's kind of snobby, who really doesn't like us very much. Um, Rui is our childhood friend who has a crush on us who we've turned down and broke the heart of, even though we have fantasies about her in a wedding dress. Masato is Trackman, who is, um, Wholesome Chad. Let's just call him Wholesome Chad. Yakio is the blonde idiot who 
Priest does in an, an interesting voice. Uh, Misaki is a childhood friend who moved away, broke her heart, and partially caused us to go suicidal. And Akira is a blonde drama girl who is best friends with Rui, who desperately wants us to date Rui, but also just like wants to involve us in all her antics. Rui, please, Rui, please, Rui, please, Rui, please. We have one vote for Masato. All right, we have one vote for Masato. General Honoish, James, since you're the most active here, we need votes from you. Really do we go please. with a girl? Do we go with a guy? Really, please. Who do we go with? Really, please. <laughs> Priest really wants us to bang our childhood best friend because she really has been sweet to us. She, like, came home and made us dinner. I mean, coming home and making us dinner kind of is what Priest wants from a relationship, I'll be honest. Oh, I mean... Yeah. I mean, when, it, when you came home and I made you cookies... It made my life. And then your bandmates ate all of them. It's true. So that would be... We have one vote for either Rui or Misaki. Jame? It might come down to you. <sighs> oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, God. Oh, man. James eee! says Rui. So I believe that means Rui wins. Sorry, Brian. We're not going to go on a date with with wholesome Chad. It's time to learn the moon speak. Rui's always been good at Japanese. I should get her to help me. Hey. Did you get away from Masato? As always. You know, considering that he's the star of track, he runs pretty slow. <laughs> Maybe he just realized that you're not worth catching. Ha! <laughs> nice one. Thank you. So, what's up? What? I can't say hi to my best friend? You were talking about the guy who would be too lazy to go to his own funeral. Fair point. So? I'm studying Japanese. Hmm. What? Are you feeling okay? Huh? Yeah. You never study. There's a first time for everything. Including using your brain, apparently. You're on a roll today. I should write these down. In a book! It'll be a bestseller. What are we even talking about? Japanese? It's kind of related. You know, literature. Ha! <laughs> Please! Japanese literature never has snarky heroine. It never has heroines. Period. Well, actually, there's a couple of cases, like Princess Kaguya, some stories from the Tales of the Spring Rain, and some of the Chikematsu Monazamon's works. Yeah, for some reason, unbeknownst to mankind, she really likes Japanese literature. I think I got the point. <laughs> Sorry. Actually, it's kind of cute to hear her talk so passionately about what she likes, but still. Still... Still, what? Why did I even call? So, what do you need? What did I need? This is really sad. I can't even remember. Uh, something important came up. Call you later? Huh? Uh, sure. What a pussy! Either I'm really forgetful, or really ranting about Japanese literature distracted me. Japanese literature! Well, I don't feel like calling again, and honestly, I'd probably get things done faster just by studying on my own. She tends to get off topic. Even if it's cute all the while. I really just think that? The sudden ring of my phone breaks me out of my thoughts. <gasps> Yay, I like this voice. <clears throat> 
Shigure? Ah, Ishimaya. A most intriguing circumstance has transpired and necessitates an immediate regency. I'm not going on another little goose chase, if that's what you mean. Oh, I aver that this is of far more exigency than mere preliminary. Despite myself, I'm intrigued. And what would that be? The police have come to an impasse and exact co co wow. coadjuvancy for the recent disappearance within Ishimayu Imperial Boarding Academy. Are you, oh, are you conversant with the cases? I ruefully think back to the events of the morning. Yeah, I'm somewhat familiar with the recent disappearances. Well, I should hope so, given that you attend the very institution. At any rate, you must meet me at the school tomorrow morning. We are scouring every last inch of campus, even if it requires neglecting sleep. With luck, a crucial piece of evidence may be uncovered. Disappearances? Neglecting sleep? Evidence? What's going on? So, we're searching the academy for a lead on the recent disappearances. That is what I previously adverted. Are you deaf or merely in a proficient of fathoming such elementary conceptualizations with your tawdry intellectuality? There goes the canon of verbal abuse. I'm honestly impressed. I can't match her in that regard. But no one disturbs my sleep. No one. And you're expecting me to pull an all-nighter for this. Well, naturally. The case demands it. I'm not doing that. Get some other people to help. On the contrary. As I have no qualms with neglecting sleep, you should be the one recruiting. Gather your accomplices as you deem necessary, Ishima Ishiyama, and meet by the school gates at 8 o'clock a.m. sharp. But, oh, I'm but so sorry. Isn't it illegal to share the confidential case information with civilians? It ought to be felonous to pursue such infinitesimal acumen, yet you are not incarcerated. That, that doesn't answer my question. Should you choose to go alone, know that you'll be spending the entirety of your day of in, in investigation. I'm not even getting paid. If you really don't want to do it, you don't have to. But we both know, know you're already too curious for that. What's really unfair is that she's actually right. Sometimes I wish that she was oblivious and stupid, but then again... She wouldn't be Shigure. Guess I have a lot of calls to make. Do we actually get to choose our team? Do we actually get to choose our team? When I arrive at the academy the next morning, I find a fairly sizable group of people gathered by the gate. None of them look particularly happy with me. Well, look who sh finally showed up. Elizabeth is definitely the angriest. I probably shouldn't have pulled the blackmail card to get her here, but at the same time, I need as many people as I can get. You thought I wouldn't? Honestly, no. I was the guy who organized this. Why wouldn't I show up? Once an irresponsible person, always an irresponsible person. I kind of prescribed to that logic, so I understand. Would you like some pepper with that salt? I want to bang her. She's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling him how to improve. Sure you are. You haven't said a single constructive thing. Does he deserve it? He doesn't bloody take anything seriously. Has he ever excelled? Ever? Is this still about that stupid project from last year? It wasn't stupid! Clearly, you don't have the brains to understand. 
Hey! Lay off her! Guys, can we just... Stay out of this, Yahiko! Elizabeth, I've tried to ignore you. I thought you'd approve because Yama stopped talking to you. But you're too stubborn to think you might be wrong. You know nothing about stop shooting off your mouth like an ignorant. You come here and say that to me! Ya Yavos need the the let loose for y'all spill him. Kandanya Wow, I'm gonna try this again. Yavos need the let loose for you spill him. Kandan what you done, huh? For a second, I find myself double checking whether that was indeed Misaki Kazehaya who just spoke. Judging from the fact that everyone else looks just as bewildered as me, the resound the answer is a resounding yes. The commotion immediately comes to a halt. Misato is seemingly the only person who actually registered what Misaki just said. She's right. M Misato. Effort! <clears throat> She's right! Ain't no use in us arguing! I kind of ship them, actually. I, I will ship them, aggressively. Well, alright then. Guess that's one way to defuse an angry Misato. What makes it a little scary is how easily Misaki could do so. Elizabeth and Rui turn away in a huff, but stay silent. I'm not completely sure whether it's out of respect for Misaki, or simply don't have the energy to keep arguing. Well, this is getting off to a great start. It appears you accrued a respectable quantity of potential peons after all, Ishiyama. <laughs> and now Shigure's here, which will either fix everything or make matters much, much worse. I'm betting on the latter. Wait, isn't that... Irie? What are you doing here? I you! I elbow him in the ribs to shut him up. He seems to understand. She is with me, obviously. I, on the other hand, have my own inquiry. By what means have you acquainted yourself with Irie Hiragi? How do I know her? Same school, remember? And yet you address her with some similitude of fellowship. So do you. How do you know her? I hold no obligation to acknowledge queries impelled by a marginally competent plebeian. With this kind of affirmation... Of my hard efforts, she moves into the group, examining each person from head to toe. They only stare back, unsure of how to react. Hmm, intriguing. Oh, hmm. I see. What are you doing? Shiguri only returns to the center of the group without another word. My name is Shiguri Anamoto. I am a freelance detective. Ain't you kinda young for that? I am 26 years of age, you tendentious. Wow. Tendentious? Tendentious, thank you. I am 26 years of age, you tendentious imbecile, and legally certified. She flashed her badge at Masato, who only shrugs. You're 26? Yes. Pray, keep yourself from any further counterproductive discussions. After a moment of silence, during which she takes a deep breath with Irie comfortably patting her back, she seems to regain control. You have been summoned on account of an extremely important affair. As you might expect, I cannot divulge due to the confidential nature of the case. However, I can tell you the following. 
currently are searching for any information that may be related to the recent disappearances of Academy students. You must be meticulous, you must be witty, you must be adaptable, and above all, you must stay alive. Your words carry unusual dramatic weight. A quick glance around the area confirms my suspicion. Everyone is leaning towards Shigure, a glimmer of excitement in their eyes. Even Elizabeth seems interested. Heck, I'm looking forward to this. Turns out that Shigure can be inspiring when she really wants to. Investigating all areas of the school until noon, where we shall reconvene at the garden rooftop to debrief. Leave no stern and turned. The lives of innocent citizens lie in our hands. Three, two, one. Break! Every person in the group tears off in every direction. Only Airi, Rui, and Shigure remain. Rui shuffles closer to Shigure with a shy smile. Um, sorry, would it be okay if I tagged along with you? Being a detective just sounds so cool! But, um, of course, only if you say it's okay with you and Irie. I notice Shiguri's chest pop up slightly like a proud veteran aiming to impress the newbies, but Ruby probably scored extra points by including Irie. Well, if you insist, Irie. Irie glances from Ruby to Shiguri and back to the edge of her brow, furrowing slightly. Shiguri, noticing her hesitation, tries a comforting smile. Remember? Irie stares vacantly at Shiguri for a long, hard moment, then nods, the corners of her lips rising just slightly. It's settled. What's your name? I'm Rui. Rui Hayata. We must depart at once, Rui. Enlightenment awaits. And she promptly dashes away, Rui on her heels. Irie briefly glances in my direction as she follows them out. I spend an idle moment relishing the fresh air against my face and the glorious serenity of silence. Then, I straighten my shoulders and evaluate my surroundings, ready to start my investigation. I actually think- This is where we need to stop. This is it, perfect. It's true. <coughs> so next time- No, not yet. Next time, on the Screaming Closet, we'll be jumping back headfirst into Lucid 9, right at the heat of our start of the investigation of the disappearances. This game is finally off on quite a running start. And I'll tell you what, we are starting off with a decision, so we're going to ask you, you who have watched this video, please comment in the YouTube comment section which we should do, and we will take that. Entrance, cafeteria, rooftop, or courtyard. Post in the comment section what you want us to do, and when we start back up again, we'll do exactly what you told us to do. That means everyone in the chat right now, you gotta go comment on the YouTube video when it comes out. Yee. So until next time, screamers! Keep screaming. Yeah!